Good evening. My name is Jill Swick, and I am the host tonight of Political Forum. We welcome you. And this is, as I said, Political Forum for Wednesday, November 20th. And we welcome as our guest today, Alderman John Pope of the 10th Ward. And we want to thank you for appearing here with us tonight. We're thank looking you, Jill. forward to spending some time with all of you. Um, I, as I said, I'm Jill Zwick, and the reason I'm your host is I'm a member of the Can TV board, and this is a live interactive program brought to you as a community service by Can TV. We welcome your questions and comments for Alderman Pope, and you can call us at 312-738-1060, and we're going to try and keep that number up on the screen for you. Um, and we will try to take as many of your calls as possible during the time that we're on the air. I'm going to show you, before we start our conversation, I'm going to give you um, a picture of Alderman Pope's ward and his um, office information so that if you want to jot down his email um, or his Facebook page or his office phone number. It's right there for you and I will occasionally flip back to that so that if you've missed it now you can get it later on. I will go back to it. So for starters, welcome to jo for joining us tonight. Well, thank you. I appreciate um, it. Sure. I wanted to um, first of all ask you to tell us a little bit about your ward if you would. I know we gave a picture of it, but if you would describe the boundaries a little bit for us, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, the and maybe the, um, you know, the makeup, makeup of the ward. Certainly. Uh, the 10th Ward is located on the far southeast side of the city. It's as far southeast as you can get, so we're bordered by the Indiana-Illinois border on the east, the suburbs on the south, including Burnham and Calumet City, oh, okay. uh, generally the Bishop Ford on the west, and as far north as 83rd Street. It includes the neighborhoods oh, of wow. South Chicago, East Side. Hegwish, South Daring, Vets Park, and Jeffrey Manor, and uh, probably the largest geographic ward in the city. Really? And uh, a diverse ward, both in ethnicity, largely Hispanic, but also okay. in terms of industry. We are historically an industrial ward. Uh, in its heyday, the ward had a significant amount of industry, specifically steel mills. Oh, right, of course. Yes. Yeah. And that's property that there's a lot of talk about redeveloping, isn't there? Certainly. We have the former U.S. Steel site, which is some 600 acres, uh, larger than the loop, and we've taken action over the last few years to uh, improve that property and bring in additional development from open space in, the, in terms of parks and new housing and, most importantly, new retail and the jobs associated with that. And we just opened US 41. We extended Lakeshore Drive, South Lakeshore oh. Drive, onto the site. Oh, that's right. Uh, Two-mile stretch. So um, that okay. we did that about a month ago. And I know we have some photos. Maybe we'll get to see that. Yeah. So it's a yeah. great, exciting opportunity that we're looking to move forward with opening up that part of the lakefront, make it accessible to the public, and redevelop it and bring some of the amenities that the, the southeast side so so deserves. Yeah. And how are jobs in your ward? Difficult. Uh, we've had the um, steel mills in the past and we've never mm -hmm. recovered. Uh, so sites like the former year steel, Lakeside, is a great opportunity to bring those new jobs, new housing, new retail opportunities um, to the right. site. And actually we're pursuing the Obama Library, the Presidential Library, so oh, we'd love to have that how there. How exciting. It is. Yes. And uh, former Senator Obama, now President Obama, represented right. these, this area. So. It would make sense to bring that library to the southeast side and, and sure. have a great anchor in the south side, which uh, far too often is overlooked and forgotten yeah. about. And it sounds like you have the space to build it. Certainly the space uh, and, uh, and the wherewithal. A, yeah, there's not a, spa a lot of space like that in the city of Chicago. Probably. Yeah, we have the only space, if you ask me for that. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, and I, I would like to show you some pictures. Maybe you'll walk us through sure, some certainly. of these at some point. Yes. Um, and I'm glad to put these up for our audience to see at any point. So, for example, tell me, um, yes. this is a picture of? This is the former U.S. Steel site, uh, Lakeside. Oh. And just as I mentioned, you can see that's the area generally bounded by 79th Street on the north, 92nd Street on the south. And it's, it's some 600 acres of lakefront property. And the roadway that runs right down the wow. center of it, that straight line, that road there. Wait, this one? Or uh, the this? other, that one. That's okay. the new South Lakeshore Drive. Ah, uh, so that allows okay. for the site to be accessible and, and developed. And you can see just the significant amount of space and opportunity out and there. all of this. That's uh, former, well, that's uh, where we used to, we had plans to put Solo Cup there, and that did not pan out. So that's okay. over 100 acres of development opportunity. Wow. Okay. Um, 
that is a lot of empty space that you've got there. It would be a perfect location for the Obama Certainly. Library. Certainly, and among other things, and we've already we already have a park open there. It's very popular, uh, and we're looking to name it Steelworkers Park to give homage to the steelworkers who oh, nice. were so significant in the history of the area. And as a former steel mill, we think that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, we're working with the park district and community to make sure uh, that name is is awarded to that park. Wonderful. Now, I know that we were talking, when you first came in, we were talking a little bit about the pet coke issue. Yes, yes. Um, could you brief our viewers sure. a little bit on that? Sure. As I mentioned, the area is historically industrial in nature, and um, uh, people are probably aware that the BP refinery is across the way at Whiting, in Whiting, right. and they've been changing over their operations to handle tar sands, the heavy crude that comes from Canada. Uh, so there's an abundance of that. Uh, the byproduct of that process is pet coke, which is like coal, but lighter and and I don't want to say more toxic, but uh, not as healthy from an environmental perspective. Okay. There's been a, a significant increase in the amount of that product being stored and handled in the area, and the owners and operators of those sites aren't taking the proper measures to contain it. As a result, it's getting in the neighborhood. People are breathing it in. It's uh, lying on their cars and in their homes. So there's been a lot of action with my office, the mayor's office, the Illinois Attorney General, and the Illinois EPA. Uh, just earlier today, I introduced an ordinance in the city council, actually, Alderman Burke and I introduced two ordinances, one to impose greater restrictions and requirements on them, and another one just to ban pet coke uh, generally, because oh, pet okay. coke is, is an issue in Detroit and L.A., similar legislation oh, has passed. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I know I read about something where it's like a black film, it is. or there's a film that just lays on cars yes, and everything, is. windows. Yes, it is, wow. and, and not good for the environment. It's not oh. good for us, so uh, we want businesses, but good business, and we deserve nothing less. Okay. Um, okay, and at this point we have a caller, so um, caller, if we may have your question or your comment, please, for Alderman Pope. I, uh, I saw on the news that I think the speed tick, uh, speed cameras have generated already 2,700 tickets or something like that. Um, is this number on par with what they were expecting, and, and sort of do you have any opinions on that? How it's so far. Well, speed cameras, I think, should not be necessarily a revenue generator. Obviously, there's a component to that, but it should be deterrent. Uh, there, there's too many accidents. Uh, there's too many kids who are subject to accidents. I know in the 10th Ward, we install stop signs or have installed stop signs and speed humps around areas where there's potential dangers, churches, schools, and parks. And actually, there was some pushback at first when we did this, but people need to realize they need to slow down and protect themselves, but most importantly, not injure someone else. And we're looking at doing speed cameras in the 10th Ward, and the first site we're looking at is along 95th Street between Ewing and the bridge, where we have had a number of accidents there and a number of near accidents. Um, so I think they're positive. Uh, the exact number, I don't know if we're on par, but it's something that we're trying to closely look at to make sure it's not just a revenue enhancement right. uh, activity. So you're focusing more on putting them where it would increase safety. Certainly, rather than certainly. Okay. I mean, the money is important, but more importantly is the safety of the drivers and the citizens. Of course, of course. Okay, I also find that I need to um, take a brief moment sure. to identify ourselves here and also to do something that I meant to do at the very beginning of the show, which was, first of all, to thank you so much for the support that you have given to Can TV. Um, just to let our callers know, there was a budget hearing, I think it was last week, yes. where your comments... Um, you know, about CAN TV were just very influential and much appreciated. Oh, thank you. And um, and we we really want to thank you publicly. Well, you're for welcome. For your support over the years. And, and I thank CAN TV. A lot of people watch this program. It's free. It's necessary. It provides a great service. It's accessible to everyone. So I think that the funding should be made available to this uh, type of programming to make sure that everyone continues to receive it. Thank you. As do I. I know you <laughs> Thank do. You. Thank you. Um, and uh, to take the brief break that I mentioned, I wanted to identify the fact that this is Political Forum, which is a community service of CAN TV. And I'm Jill Zwick, a board member here at CAN TV. And it's a live interactive show, so your phone calls are more than welcome and appreciated. And um, any questions or comments you have for Alderman Pope can be addressed to 312-738-1060. And after I said that, we already have a caller. So, caller, uh, may we have your question for Alderman Pope or your comment, please? Good evening. Good Alderman, evening. is it really about safety in terms of red light cameras? Why don't they have, like in some cities, they have like a, uh, a countdown, let you know when the light will turn red, if it's really about safety? Sure, those countdown uh, lights, they're, they're growing in terms of popularity. We're trying to convert as many of those uh, cross- uh, the cross sections, the cross lanes as possible to let 
individuals know, and that's mainly for the pedestrians, the foot traffic, to allow them enough time to cross the road. It's not necessarily an indicator for the vehicular traffic to beat the light. So in general, people who are driving cars and trucks should know that when that light is green, you can go at a decent speed. When it turns yellow, it's time to slow down and come to the stop in the intersection. And I appreciate those countdowns as a pedestrian. Yes. I walk a lot, and they're really nice to have. Exactly. Um, I also wanted to ask, oh, we have another <coughs> caller. So before I ask you that sure. question, I'm going to ask our next caller for their question or their comment. Hi there. Um, Hi. I did not go to the budget hearings, but I heard from a friend how very supportive you were of uh, Can TV. And my name is Carol Harold, and I'm a member of the... Uh, Committee for Media Access, and uh, I wondered if you had any update. I, I really, really wanted to thank you for um, your concern about technology parity and sure. uh, all of the other issues about independence and continuing with CAN TV. Thanks again. No, thank you. Uh, thank you. The, Rosemary Crimble, who's the Commissioner of the Business Affairs and Consumer Protection, who um, handles this aspect of the city. Um, has committed to ensuring that uh, the contracts are done as quickly as possible and that um, the same level of funding that RCN provided in the past uh, should also be, be funded by Comcast. And myself and several other aldermen uh, question her on that because we think it's only fair and it makes sense. So we're going to continue to push the issue and ensure that we have that communication so that successful programs like this can continue to operate. Right. Thank you so much. And, you know, it just, it's, it's such an important thing for a place like Can TV, who is delivering public service programming, to have a sense of what yes. money is going to be coming in so they can plan for ways to reach the public and to get information to the public. And But I'm preaching to the choir. So. Uh, I agree. Um, thank you. Uh, we have another caller. So, caller, may we have your question or your <coughs> comment, please? Yes, it looks like, Alderman, you have uh, lots of uh, land uh, that's really uh, rich for economic development. So my question is, is the city and yourself, you're trying to lure the big businesses who could help generate some tax revenue for the city sure. instead of uh, possibly that money then being on the onus of, of the residents? Yes, we're, we're trying to attract all kinds of businesses, both small and large, and actually retain and expand the businesses we have. We do have some uh, significant competition being so close to the suburbs in Indiana where, as you know, the tax structures are different, uh, specifically in Indiana. Um, but we've done some things recently, I shouldn't say recently, over the last three years, we have TIFs and we have programs called the Small Business Improvement Fund and the Neighborhood Improvement Fund. We use those tax dollars to offer improvements to existing businesses, to the physical plants, to their windows, the security systems, cameras, doors, uh, tuck pointing, things of that nature so they can remain competitive and keep their, their house in good physical order. And the same holds true for the residential component. We have the Neighborhood Improvement Fund, which again offers grants, free money basically, to property owners to improve their property. And it's essential, especially given the aging stock that we have in the 10th Ward. So we're trying to lure the big businesses, of course, as well as the small businesses. And it's very challenging, um, but we continue to work with our Chambers of Commerce, the City of Chicago. Oftentimes my office feels like a real estate agent because we try to host so many people, drive them around, talk, them, talk to them about the benefits. We're trying to be cutting edge in terms of the type of businesses we have, too. But at the end of the day, we need some good businesses, whether it be restaurants or grocery stores. Yeah. Um, and those are an important aspect of the economic development of the neighborhood. Sure, sure. Um, is that one of the reasons I'm looking at, like, a yes. picture of Planet Fitness? Is this sure. one of the newer businesses? This is. This is a Planet Fitness in the uh, East Side Mall at 118th Street off of Avenue O. And Walgreens formerly occupied this space, about 13,000 square feet. They decided to move out of there, mm -hmm. uh, move right across the street to have a freestanding building with all the amenities of a up-to-date Walgreens, including a drive-through, and we're fortunate to land Planet Fitness, and that's a fitness center. Uh, nice. People complained about not having a local fitness center in the neighborhood. There was one there previously by the YMCA, and their membership has increased to over 3,400, so really? they're very popular. That's a photo of myself and some of the members, including the staff there, and the East Side Chamber of Commerce, Yolanda Deanda there, is uh, in the pink blouse, so as you can see, uh, yeah. well populated with uh, clients and trying to take care of their health, uh, they're in the neighborhood and contributing to the economic vitality. That's great. Um, tell me something about um, education in your ward. 
Is there much going on? Sure, sure. I mean, uh, obviously education is key. You know, we mentioned jobs, and no one's going to get a job unless they have a good education. And I was just preaching this last night as we had some volunteers in the office. And we're making some great strides in terms of physical plants. We've built two new schools, and our kids need a good physical plant to learn. And we're working on our third school on the east side. Oh, really? Um, but we've got some great programs and great teachers, and I commend the principals. Generally, most of them work very hard, are very committed. Yeah. They do a hell of a job, excuse my French. And uh, our high school in particular, George Washington, I'm very proud to say that they've got a wonderful IB program and some other extracurricular programs, in, including a culinary program. And oh, really? they just won the state championship in soccer two Saturdays ago. Wow. So I'm pleased to announce that, their first state championship. But more so, when we had the reception for the kids, when they came back from the western suburbs, yeah. the principal mentioned the academics, and the coach referred to his, his players as student athletes and also emphasized the importance of academics. So I think that kind of mindset yeah. is, is right on target. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing improvement at uh, all the schools. It's very challenging. Let's not kid ourselves, is, but right, we're seeing improvements um, across the board, but we need to continue to, to work hard yeah, at that. Yeah, a lot of parent involvement. Yes, also. that's the key. When, when people yeah. want to complain, what have you done? I mean, right. the police can't do everything, the aldermen, the teachers. Got to spend time with your children, and right. it's crucial. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, we do have another caller. So, caller, may we have your question for Alderman Pulp or your comment? My question is, I'd like to know um, what is the latest, um, because I'm a bike, bicyclist, um, that I heard that um, a bicyclist has to take a class. Um, is it mandatory? A cyclist in the city of Chicago? When riding on the, on the street? You know, I am not aware of that, to tell you the truth. Uh, a, a class that's required by the city of Chicago for cyclists to ride on the street? I'm not familiar with that. I know Mayor Emanuel in particular has increased the amount of bike lanes we have. We've done some extensive bike lanes, and we want to be selective in the 10th Ward because it is an industrial area. We want to make sure there's not too much conflict between cyclists and uh, the industrial trucks and traffic. But we've done some additional bike lanes, uh, including the Burnham Greenway. We're trying to make some connections really? with Indiana, who has a pretty extensive connection. Nice. And by redeveloping Lakeside, we plan to have a continuous bike path um, throughout the whole neighborhood oh, from the nice. very south, from Kell Park up through Lakeside and into Rainbow Beach, so you can connect the south side to downtown. Nice. Yeah, I think what the caller may be referring to is I remember reading an article about someone proposing. Oh, sure. Um, that you pay a twenty-five dollar yeah, fee yes, you're right. and take a class. Alderman so, Pat Dahl had proposed right, that right. as part of the budget process. Yeah, yeah. I think um, that's what our our caller may have heard. Yeah, th there's not been any current action on that, but yeah, that was a proposal by Alderman Pat Dahl. Okay, okay, thank you. And I believe, thank you, caller. And I believe we have another caller with a question or a comment. Hello, Hi. my name. Kate. Uh, hi, John. Hi, Kate. I, Kate. I'm one of the main organizers on everything that's going on with the pet coke down here right now. Sure. Um, I see this as an acute public health issue. Mm -hmm. As we continue to organize the neighborhood, um, we are noticing that there are massive amounts of upper respiratory infections, chronic eye issues, mm -hmm. high rates of asthma, all related to mm -hmm. pet coke and other industry in the area. Um, so the nature of pet coke, as you may know or not know, is very yeah. oily and yes. sticky. So it's, it leaves a residue, not just on actual children, but on homes as well and right. inside homes. So my first question is, doesn't it concern you that the public health of your ward is being assaulted daily? And then my second question is, how specifically are you going to work on improving this? Well, Kate, I think you know uh, uh, this is of concern to me, and, and we've met personally in my office, and I've been to community meetings, and we've been working very closely, my office with the mayor's office, the Illinois EPA, who is the lead on this, the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, the Attorney General, and the U.S. EPA. Uh, yesterday, we had a conference call with the Illinois EPA to give some updates in terms of where we are with enforcement and legislation. Uh, today, I met with the city folks to talk about some of the action we're taking. And as I mentioned earlier, um, I just introduced legislation today, as I said I was pursuing in the last couple of weeks, legislation to place greater enforcement measures with the city to require those operators to take the appropriate action to properly handle, transport, and store that material, including tarping it, wetting it, or possibly keeping it under an enclosure. There's also another ordinance, as I said earlier, that Alderman Burke and I introduced that basically bans pet coke uh, from the city of Chicago in its entirety. So, yes, we're very concerned, and 
We've been having numerous conversations. Uh, the litigation that the Attorney General's Office initiated back on November 4th continues, and I would fully expect additional uh, litigation. And this is a, a, a problem, obviously, for the southeast side, but one that's growing uh, nationwide as pet coke becomes more uh, predominant throughout the Midwest and the upper portion of North America. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, I must take a brief uh, moment to identify ourselves and remind you all that you are watching Political Forum, which is a community service of CAN TV. My name is Jill Zwick. I'm a board member here at CAN TV, and this is a live interactive show, so we welcome your phone calls. Our number is 312 738 1060. And I've gotten a signal that we have another call waiting. Hmm. So let's take that call now. Caller, your question, please. Hi, Alderman. I just wanted to ask, um, what has to happen for the uh, talk about the elected school board to get out of the rules committee? Uh, that's pretty complicated. The, um, uh, the city council has to vote on it again. And most notably, the rules committee chairman has to release it. So that requires some urging by the committee members and the rest of the aldermen. Um, so that's something, yes, that we're interested in, in pursuing, at least having conversation about uh, the interest in having a elected school board versus one that's appointed. And I know that's been an issue that's been talked about for, for a long time since uh, the school boards have been in place. And, and I would hope once we get through this budget process that that would gain more ground, uh, gain more traction, and, and work its way out of committee and have a structure that uh, will allow for that to occur. Okay, thank you. Um, we also had a caller okay. um, who asked, um, he's a South Side, he or she is a South Side resident, who says he doesn't want any more charter schools in the area, yeah. and he'd like your position on charter schools. Well, I, I believe that we need a variety in terms of schooling and education. We need to think outside of the box. But generally, I'm opposed to uh, charter schools. We do have some charter schools in the neighborhood, and I'm not going to be dishonest with you. Um, the most recent school that we're proposing that is now actually funded through the efforts of Governor Quinn and, and Mayor Emanuel and the whole Galisto family um, is not going to be a charter school. We have two schools that are largely significantly overcrowded. Uh, Galisto, which is at 1,400 students, and Jane Adams, which is about 800. Both of those schools would receive uh, some relief from the overcrowding by the construction of a new school. And that new school would be a CPS neighborhood school, not a oh. charter school. Okay. Uh, we're still working on the funding of that. It's there. We've got to dot all the I's, cross the T's. And in the next few months, the community will be more involved with the planning of this, and we'll learn more about the process, the timing, including how the boundaries will be um, drawn, how the new principal and staff will be hired, and eventually what the name of the school will be. Ah, okay, okay. Um, we have one more caller, and then I'm going to have to start winding up, so let's take one more call. Certainly. Um, caller, may we have your comment or your question for Alderman Pope, please? Yes, hello? Hi. Hello. Yes, I'm from the, um, from the east side. I've been living here for the past 30 years. Okay. And uh, we've been dealing with this dust and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, it's been really bad, like someone else mentioned. It's sure. all over the windows. It's all over in our gardens. It's on our cars. I mean, it's all over. So my question for you, Alderman Pope, mm -hmm. um, I don't tend to believe everything I read or hear um, okay. on the news. I like to get, um, you know, <laughs> I guess, it's... the true story. Yeah. I would like to know, <clears throat> the two companies or the several companies, are they longtime supporters of you? Uh, KCBX has donated money to my campaign, sure, and other companies have, and that same money has gone back into the community. Uh, because individuals or groups donate money do not mean I'm in bed with them or support them. It's uh, much like a relationship. Uh, you can agree or disagree with your wife, husband, family, and because an organization donates some money to me does not mean that I'm going to do everything that they ask or request. Um, and certainly uh, KCBX knows that I am not in agreement with their operations. I've initiated the legislation to ban pet coke, which is their activity. I initiated uh, legislation today, too, to allow the city to have greater enforcement and been working with yourself and the community organizations to address this at all levels, including the Illinois Attorney General, U.S. EPA, and Illinois EPA. Wow. And based on the number of callers, uh, I know, we all know it's a significant high-priority pro high priority project. and. And hopefully everyone will stay engaged and continue to fight this because 
it's an ongoing battle. You had mentioned this dust has been around for years. It's been around for decades, really? uh, since the early 1900s. So mm -hmm. times have changed, and we need to change with them, and so do the businesses, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. Um, Clearly, okay, we have one minute left, so we need to wrap up. But I wanted to just take a moment to um, put the overhead on again in case anyone missed your office address or yes. phone number so that they can contact you with any questions that we were not able to get to tonight. Um, or they can certainly, if they didn't get that, they can always call here, and yeah. we will give them the information. Um, I want to thank you so much for being thank here. You. If there's any last comment you want to wrap up with about anything that's going on, um, well, I, I just want to thank free. Can TV again for allowing this forum, and you've heard some interesting questions and comments, uh, some more flattering than others, but it's a great <laughs> way for people to express themselves. And yes. more than that, I think this kind of forum allows people to get involved, and we should expect everyone to get involved. Questions about education and the environment and jobs, everyone needs to step up um, to make the neighborhood as successful as possible. Okay. So please get involved, and maybe as simple as, you know, calling 311 for a complaint or a question or, or calling my office or getting on the website or stopping by the school or park. So please get involved. That makes a strong community. Yes, it does. Well, thank you again for appearing, thank for you, answering so many questions, for being with us, and for being a regular on our show. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. having me. Thank you. And thank you all for watching.